on the avionics. I am green and tracking green.
Good evening and welcome to Rocket Lab's 41st electron launch, a mission for Capella Space called We Will Never Desert You. You are looking at a live view of our electron rocket on the pad as we wait for its scheduled liftoff at 6.30 p.m. local time or 6.30 a.m. UTC. My name is Prachi Saknani and I'm a junior reaction wheels engineer here at Rocket Lab. And I'm Keegan Black, a learning and development advisor and alongside Prachi, We'll be taking you through the final minutes of today's operations to launch our electron launch vehicle from Pad B at Rocket Lab Launch Complex 1 in Mahia, New Zealand. We've had a clear run through operations so far. The weather is looking green though, and we are keeping an eye on solar activity, also known as space weather, as we pr proceed towards T0. Very soon, our operators will be polled by the launch director for their go, go status for launch. That's coming up at the T minus 12 minute mark. Before we get to that, let's take a look at the mission at hand. Today's launch is our 41st electron launch overall, our ninth for the year, and our second in a row for Capella Space, a provider of commercial synthetic aperture radar imagery, also known as SAR. SAR is a form of radar used to create two-dimensional images or three-dimensional reconstructions of objects such as landscapes. Electron's payload today is a single Acadia satellite for Capella's constellation that is set to join another Acadia satellite we carried to space just a couple of weeks ago for our We Love the Nightlife mission. Today's back-to-back -back mission is in fact our third for Capella this year and fourth overall since we first launched for them back in 2020. Let's take a look back over our missions for Capella to date. As we approach T minus 12 minutes to lift off there, oh, actually coming out on, on 10, uh, our operators will run through the go no go poll by this mission's launch director. And this is coming up shortly. Let's listen into mission control now and check in on how we're tracking for launch. Seven seconds and counting. Uh, we are go for terminal count at T minus 10 minutes. Uh, from this time, the three word hold procedure is in effect. That was Mission Control reporting that Electron Systems and the Capella payload on board are confirmed healthy and good to go for an on-time launch. The range is ready to support and the weather is looking good for launch today. We are still targeting liftoff at 6.30 p.m. local time or 6.30 a.m. UTC. Today's mission profile includes all of the usual launch milestones you've come to expect from Electron. Two seconds before liftoff, Electron will light its nine Rutherford engines on the first stage to power up for flight. The launch pad's hold down mechanisms will release and Electron will head skyward right on T0. Rising up and then heading southeast from LC1, Electron will reach supersonic speeds in under a minute. That's a call out we expect to hear from Mission Control at 55 seconds into flight. Just as we approach the mission's next milestone, max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure. Once we've cleared that gate, it would be another minute and 20 seconds or so of the Rutherfords firing hot before they're scheduled shut down at Miko or main engine cutoff. Once they do, it's only three seconds later that the first stage will separate from the second stage. With the main engines off and the stage one propellant tanks empty, electron stages will separate to drop the dead weight. After a few seconds of separation by the momentum that moves the second stage away from the first, we light up the second stage's sole Rutherford engine to carry on with the mission. After about 30 seconds, the payload fairing will split in half and drop away. 
At this point in the mission, the second stage will cruise along for a couple of minutes before we reach the next milestone, the battery hot swap. We'll explain more about that step when we get there. After a few more minutes, Electron's second stage will have carried the Capella payload to its apogee, or the highest point in its orbit above Earth. We time the shutdown of the second stage engine just as we get to that marker at about 9 minutes and 13 seconds into flight. We then separate the second stage from Electron's kick stage, which carries the payload, starting to travel the Earth in an elliptical orbit. Because we want to deploy the satellites into a circular orbit, we wait until the kick stage completes one pass and comes back around before we light up its carry engine to place the kick stage and payload onto its circular path. Once there, it's time for payload deployment and the end of the mission for Electron and Rocket Lab and the start of operations on orbit for Capella. Every launch is the combined effort of our dedicated teams across the United States, Canada, and New Zealand. But many of our team members behind Electron, our new rocket Neutron, and our satellites and space systems didn't come from traditional space backgrounds. They are composite boat builders, automotive mechanics, electricians and electrical engineers, jewelers, veterans, aircraft technicians, manufacturing engineers, and a whole lot more. We're hiring right now all across our US, New Zealand, and Canadian teams, and we'll be sharing a bit about life at each location in the coming weeks. But for today, let's take a look at what life is like as a rocket labber in our New Zealand team, and why it might not be as much rocket science as you thought. As it was sitting on the pad, just messaging on the phone, like, is it gonna go, is it gonna go? My heart was pounding. And then it took off, and that was probably the most proud I've ever been of myself. It was a really cool moment. <laughs> I thought when they were looking for technicians uh, that worked in aircraft, uh, that had uh, an attention to detail they were looking for, I, I thought I align well with that. I'd love to be in the space industry. Uh, I thought I'd, I'd give it a shot. Uh, the worst that happens is to say no, and here I am. I was in school. I never considered working in a rocket company, building rockets. I mean, working for a rocket company is kind of a big deal. However, I, like I said, I came from school and I was able to learn on the job as an apprentice, so there's always that option. But however, none of us were building rockets before this, no one around here really. So we've all been learning and growing together as a team. So anyone can be like us. I like to think of myself as like an electrician still, but like a space electrician. So that's kind of how I describe it. It still takes people minutes to realize what we do, so yeah. It's funny just seeing the cogs tick and then realize, yeah, we're not just I'm making something up, basically. So I would say a drive for continuous self-improvement is a big one. You know, we're always trying to improve the product and improve time and quality and everything like that. I came into Rocket Lab not having any experience. I had no preconceived ideas of what I was going to do. Uh, and I've been here six and a half years now. Uh, it's been a hell of a ride. I've loved every minute. There's been a lot of challenges, but every one of those challenges, I get to look back on and be like, it's been the best time of my life. Um, building, not just Electron, but building things that, are, that have been to the moon, things that are going to Mars, things that are hopefully one day gonna go to Venus. And for that, I'm extremely grateful and proud of what I get to do here. I've sort of learned more about being a leader, more about working with people and how to make certain people work well with other people, for example, and a lot of people need different things. Um, the advice I give to someone who wants to work at Rocket Lab would probably just be um, apply yesterday. Um, you know, whatever you want to do, there's, <laughs> there's something here for you. As long as you've got the right attitude, you know, there's a pretty good chance you'll be able to work here. It's worth it, right? Like all of the hard work that you put in, this is a reward for it. And it's crazy that we have people who are so smart and so young doing amazing things. I never ever thought that I would be here. And look, here I am, building path <laughs> With more and more electrons to the launch pad, development of our new large launch vehicle Neutron and expansion across our space systems and satellite manufacturing sites, our team is growing. If you'd like to be a part of it, check out the open positions on the career section of our website. We are now at a critical juncture in the lead up to launch, the switch to the countdown auto sequence. The team are tracking no issues with the launch vehicle, Capella's payload remains healthy, and the weather is looking clear for an on-time liftoff. At T-minus two minutes, the flight computer on Electron will take over the launch countdown. 
At T minus 1 minute 30 seconds, we should hear the call from Mission Control that LOCK's loading is complete on Electron. Shortly after that, at T minus 1 minute, we can expect confirmation that the launch vehicle's first and second stages are pressurized for liftoff. This will be followed by the final countdown to launch at T minus 10 seconds. Let's hand you over now to Mission Control. And we've just had an update from Mission Control. It looks like we've had a hold, which could be that pesky space weather. So we'll wait here to hear an update from Mission Control on whether we'll proceed with today's attempt.
Welcome back. If you're just joining us today, we are in a hold as we wait for operators to establish a new T0 for today's launch for Capella. Happily, LC1 has given us quite the sunset to admire as we wait to go to space. Stay with us and enjoy these views, and we'll be back with you with an update very soon.
Welcome back. Great news from Mission Control. We have recycled the count, and we are now less than 13 minutes away from liftoff. Let's listen in to the operators as we proceed with the count for our 41st Electron mission. Stations LD on mission, proceeding with the go no go sequence. Stage. Stage is go for launch. Avionics. Avionics is go. GNC. GNC is go. Vcon. Vcon is go. T1. T1 is go. GC. GC is go. PLS. PLS is go. RSO. RSO is go. Met. Met is go. RF. RF is go. MM. MM is go. And LD SUP. LD SUP is go. Okay, that's the go no go sequence complete. We are T minus 11 minutes and 20 seconds and counting. Uh, we are go for terminal count at T minus 10 minutes. From this time, the three word hold procedure is in effect. GC LD mission. LD GC. I proceed with sequence 56, pad terminal checks. Pad terminal checks in work. GC on mission. GC LD. Stage one igniter pressures verified, hydraulic pressures verified, the pad terminal checks are complete. Copy, thank you. Avionics LD mission. LD. Uh, please proceed with sequence 57 avionics terminal checks. Proceeding with sequence 57. s band to switch the high power for flight. Stage LD mission. LD stage. Proceed with sequence 58, stage terminal checks. Copy that, sequence 58. Stage one and stage two, high voltage batteries ready for flight. GC LD mission. LD GC. Proceed with sequence 59, launch pad ready. Launch pad ready and work. LD 
LD avionics on mission. Avionics LD. Avionics terminal checks complete. Copy, thank you. It's a beautiful evening at Launch Complex 1 as Electron waits on the pad ready for its journey to space. After an earlier hold, we are now on track for a liftoff at 6.55 p.m. local time, making for a stunning nighttime launch. We are fast approaching the launch auto sequence, so let's listen in to Mission Control for the final critical moments before liftoff. Stay building. Sequence 58 is complete. Copy, thank you. LD, GC on mission. GC, LD. Hold down mechanisms are armed. The strongback is retracted for flight. Copy, thank you. GC on mission. GC LD. ECS disabled. The pad auto sequence is armed. The pad is ready for launch. Copy all. Thank you. All stations, LD on mission. From now on, there should be no red flags in your critical LCCs. VCON, LD mission. LD VCON. Lock auto sequence and confirm. Confirmed, locked. And confirm all expected primary flight computer ASGOs are green. Confirmed, ASGOs are green. 
Okay, all stations, we are go for auto sequence start at T minus two minutes. LD is go for launch. Avionix batteries have switched to internal power. Ground power disabled. Vehicle is fully on internal power. AFTS is green and enabled for flight. load is complete, the system is in recirculation. Anti-gazering is disabled. Stage one and stage two tanks are pressed. High flow engine purge enabled. Minus 20 seconds and counting. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lift off. Plus 30 one, seconds, and our 41st Electron has lifted off from the pad at Rocket Lab's Launch Complex 1. We have an amazing view of Electron powering its way to orbit for Capella. Very soon, we will approach max Q, or maximum aerodynamic pressure, the moment that the rocket experiences the most stress as it climbs. Let's listen in for the call from Mission Control that Electron has cleared max Q. Electron is supersonic. Approaching max Q. High voltage battery discharge is nominal. Cleared max Q. An electron has cleared max Q. The rocket is performing nominally so far, now up to 16 kilometers in altitude as it reaches speeds of more than 2,300 kilometers an hour. Next up are three events in electron's ascent that will happen in quick succession. First up, we have Miko, the moment when all nine Rutherford engines on the first stage throttle down and then shut off completely. God, Very quickly after moment. that, we'll have the separation of the first and second station. stages, followed by the ignition of the single Rutherford engine on Electron's second stage as the mission continues to orbit. Those calls should be coming up from our operators in mission control soon, so let's listen closely. Stage one propulsion holding nominal. Stand by for Miko in approximately 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds to staging. Entered burnout detect mode.
Miko confirmed. Stage separation successful. And all stations, I just uh, we have experienced an anomaly. Um, please remain on station, and we will investigate and action the anomaly plan. Uh, 45 is not up yet. It appears that we've had an issue during today's flight, so we'll be ending today's webcast to give operators time to review the data and share details as soon as they come to hand. Thanks for joining us for today's webcast. This is Mission Control, signing off. <laughs>